little coconut juice in there. There's some fresh mint. I wish I could give you all a virtual sample. Um, enjoy whatever you have. Imagine that it is. And that will, ooh, you know what? We're going to put a slice of pear. So being a pear evening it, that it is, I went last night to the Ashland Co-op, one of our fine co-ops in the area, and it got the pears they had. They had three pears right now. As we know, this is a pear-rich valley. The, I think it was the, ooh, somebody's going to help me out here, the Riviera pear um, that Harry and David built their business on. And these are not Riviera pears. I don't know if I've ever had a Riviera pear. Anybody in the room had a Riviera pear that they know? No? No. All right, <laughs> not yet. Um, so this one is, and I'm gonna, it, it's spelled like abate. Abate Fatel. I have a feeling it's abate Fatel. something fancy, ho, ho, ho. So I don't know. Uh, but I got that one. And then there was this beautiful red Bartlett beautiful, looks like an apple. I picked this one on purpose because it has a little streak running down it, kind of a little rebel skin, and then the classic green Bartlett. And in my research in looking at pears and anticipating this time together, by all means, have your, have your cocktail. I'm going to put a slice of this pear in here. Um, I realized that different pears, all pears are not created equal. Um, and so one thing about your pears is to test for ripeness, you want to there you go, my love. You want to take the, um, notice the head of the pear, this, this top part of it, and if you can just ever so slightly push on it and it gives, it's about ripe. Um, pears are one fruit that ripen off the tree. So I think that's interesting too. Not a lot of fruit necessarily does that. When it's, if it ripens off the tree, that means you want to pick it before it's ripe and then let it ripen uh, room temperature on your counter, what have you. Ripening is definitely part of connection. Ripening is letting things come to fruition. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> it's all I mean, about, that's nice. right. It's all about looking at how something is ripening, how it's developing and where you want it. Do you want to pick it early so then it ripens closer to home? Do you want to leave it on the tree so you pick it at the moment you want to eat it and those wonderful juices go down your chin, whatever that might be, connect with your pear and your fine self. Let's toast this fine valley in the Rogue Valley, fine evening, with whatever you've got. Cheers, thanks for being here for a very, very entertaining evening. I'm Ginger, your host, brought to you by the fabulous staff at Jackson County Library Services. Bow, bow, bow. I feel like there should be a soundtrack to this. Oh, my studio audience is going to start uh, rapping. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt that. I'd love to sing, but I got nothing right now. Are so, there any pair songs with the word pair in them? Mm, I bet there are, and I bet we can look that up. As in P-E-A-R too, right, Carrie? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yep, yep. <laughs> there's, there's probably a lot with the P-A-I-R, and then there's P-A-R-E as in the knife. Are there other pairs? P-A-I-R. P-A-I-R? Yeah. Yeah. P E P A I R. P A R. Yes. <laughs> no, yes. Yeah, it's Friday night. Give yourselves a break. I'm going to taste this. This is a pretty darn good combination. Mm -hmm. I haven't done this before. The basic organic pear juice, fresh mint. Mmm. Smell it. Mmm. Yeah, right? Mmm. And the, uh, the pulpy coconut water. So uh, there's that first one. Note, the juice, as I call it, the lessons, don't get hydrated when you're cooking or connecting because that's a bummer. You can get a headache and then it kind of blows everything. So the first book I want to feature is this one. Would you hold that up to the, the uh, hold up to the camera? Go ahead and stand up. Stand up. Okay. Yeah. This is called Pears. There it is. And I got a bunch of books from our fine library because, of course, here we are celebrating the library on this Perry entertaining evening. This one's here, Pears, a Country Garden Cookbook. You'll get the list. And I really found, I've never seen this book before. I really found this one of value. And here's three reasons why. It helps me connect with what pears are, meaning we take them for granted, quite frankly, especially where we live. And no matter where you live, pears can be a really common fruit. The common things are often the ones we take for granted, like our library. Library love is coming at you huge 
here's your only warning, because I'm a lifelong library lover, patron. I don't like the word user. I like patron better. That feels, that feels better. Uh, and I remember as far back as I can remember as a little girl, I remember going to the library. I remember my mom and my sister and I walking down to the library where I lived in Minnesota and going and getting books and coming home with stacks of books and the stacks of books. If you think about what books you got when, when you were a little kid, what were those stacks of books that you got? Picture books. Okay. Picture books. What else? I was all about the Roald Dahl books. Ah. Oh, Roald Dahl, Hardy Boys. Yeah. You pick books. Sex was always large. Yes, it was always, right? There's, yeah, you, had, you probably limited out. Mine were the Peanuts comic books. I remember stacks of those. I have one over on one of my bookshelves because I loved it so much. My mom and dad got me one. And so um, I really, I connected with this book because it helps me remind, it helps remind me not to take things for granted. And while we've had this lockdown, while our library was closed to reconsider and be thoughtful and not be part of the problem, it was the number one thing I was missing. It's, it's like, wow, it's a connection to the world. A library is so, whoa, when you think about it, it's crazy. It's free, it's our tax dollars at work, the, one of the best possible uses. I don't know about you, but I can't imagine not being able to read and not having access to books. Put a fork in me, I'm done, if that's the case. <laughs> it is, wow, we are so fortunate to have libraries. So support your library, whatever that looks like for you. You can volunteer, you can donate, just find, give a call, find out what your library needs, wants, what you can do for your library. You know the quote, ask not what your library can do for you, but what you can do for your library. Yes, I'll drink to that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So this book, The Pear is a Country Garden Cookbook, really a great book. I highly recommend you checking it out. One of the reasons of the many is it's got illustrated pears, of course, as it should, and all these different breeds. I had, I had no idea. I'm not a pear farmer. Maybe you are. Um, and it gives different attributes and when it grows and where it grows around the country. And I'm a pushover for great pictures, and it's got really nice pictures. Uh, and the recipes, pretty darn solid. We used one as an inspiration. We made wontons last week. Make wontons? Anybody like wontons? Yes. Yeah, wontons are fun. You can make a phenomenal filling with wontons if you wanted to. If you want wontoned to. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to, you could put pear filling in there. In fact, this one, the sausage and pear wontons. I'm out of out of wrappers. I I couldn't wait. Sorry. Um, it's got shallots and Asian pears, olive oil, sausage, fennel. It's, oh, it's so good. We'll do this again, my friends. Check out this book, Pears, a Country Garden Cookbook from the Jackson County Library. Fantastic. Really simple. That is also what a great connection is. A great connection is simple. There is simplicity to it. It is not overly complex. Depth is different than complexity, my friends. So you can have something that's really deep and meaningful, it still doesn't have to be complex. There's a full moon tonight, the night we're filming this. The full moon is really simple. It's amazing, so beautiful. I hope you go out and look at it whenever the next full moon is. If you're watching tonight, part of this very, uh, very entertaining evening with us at Jackson County Library brought to you by the fine folks there. Appreciate the simple things. Great connections are simple. My fine studio audience, Mary Lynn, my neighbor, it's a simple relationship. Simple doesn't mean stupid. It doesn't mean that it's less than. It doesn't mean that anything's not possible. It means that it starts simply and easily, just like a beautiful pear growing on the tree. There you go. Take a sip to that. Make yourself a drink. Help yourself to anything you want to serve yourself. We're going <laughs> to feature a couple other recipes tonight besides this made up cocktail. And that's the great thing about beverages. They're very flexible, just like good connections. There's what I call a nimbility to it. It's flexible. It's elastic. I think of it as an accordion. It comes and goes, it grows, and sometimes stays the same, but we can expand and contract that. I'm excited to experiment with some more pear juice. And we're gonna also make mm, so many choices. This is the only hard part for those of you who love to cook and love to eat. The only part, hard part is choosing. One way I would enhance this beverage is something else we have a lot of in the valley is cherries. In fact, Mary Lynn has a cherry tree in her backyard 
and one that comes over her side fence right down the road. And we end up harvesting cherries. If you do too, I'd love to know in the chat what you use your cherries for. One thing we decided to make a couple years ago was maraschino cherries. Now, they're a lot simpler, there's that word again, than most people realize. Have you had homemade maraschino no. cherries? No. <laughs> I'm very excited. She's ringing her hands, folks. They're good. Maraschino cherries are very simple. They are not naturally glowing like something that is uh, perhaps a nuclear reactor oriented. They are very simple. They're very tasty. We made brandy cherries the first year we made them and maraschino cherries. I'm gonna load you up, Marilyn, because they're okay. so good. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the juice in your cocktail. Beautiful. Ooh, yay. So pretty, so yeah. simple. And what a great use of cherries. So you only have to watch out for the pits. I have yet to find a pitter that is a, uh, Iron clad and getting all the pits out, so watch your teeth. That's a great thing about pears, that they don't, the seeds aren't gonna require a trip to the dentist. So I will put a couple in my drink. I like them, they're lots of fun. They're colorful, they're a surprise. Sometimes you can surprise people and not put it in, not let them know. It's a good surprise. <laughs> you could do that with your pear too. This pear that I cut the uh, uh, Abate Fatel, it is really quite soft. And I, when I pick them out, I picked out a couple of different ones. And for some pears, the paler the color, the more ripe. And you just need to learn a little bit about your pears. Your produce people, the produce pros of the world can help you with this. I love going grocery shopping. I know, I'm a nerd. I love it, my husband loves it, I love it, because he doesn't love it. And pears and your produce folks are a match made in heaven. They're happy to help you learn about pears, just like our fabulous library crew here in Jackson County loves to help you find what you want at the library. We, like, we have so many research. We have a business library. Did you know that? No. We have a business library in our library system. What a bonus, Elena. She's rocking the, the business classes. It's fantastic. If you're in business, you want to know more about that, catch up with what's going on for business classes with the library. I love that. Total business nerd too. Back to the pears. The pears are going to have different colors depending on the ripeness. Now, remember earlier when I said pears will ripen off the tree. So you pick them, they're probably gonna be green. And if you pick them while they're green and still very firm, that's a good thing. This Bartlett, really nice, robust, this is a very Rubenesque shaped pear. Peter Paul Ribbons, the artist would love this pear. Thank you, art degree. Carrie, you know what I'm talking about. I got one too. <laughs> it's handy. Um, I don't like the stickers on all of them, but so it goes. Anyway, this one is really firm. I picked it on purpose. I picked another one of the Bartlett's that was a little paler. I know the color's not gonna show up a ton, very well on, uh, on our situation here, but it is starting to turn a little yellow. It's starting to turn that lighter greenish yellow. And then I know it's starting to get more ripe. Now, you don't wanna let your pear get overripe because it's one fascinating fact is that pears will rot from the inside out. Mm. Mm. So yeah, it's not a terrible thing. It's a good thing to know though, because if you, if you let it sit and let it sit and you're like, tomorrow, baby, tomorrow, no, the pear's on, no, today is a great day. Cut into me, let's go. Because it could start going from the outside, the inside out, and then that's a bummer. Then you're gonna compost the whole thing. Here's the juice, don't throw it away. Start a compost. Our library has so many wonderful books on how to return this wonderful material to Mother Earth so we can make more soil. So we always have a compost bucket right in the kitchen. This is my kitchen, welcome to my kitchen, everybody. This is, this is the real deal, it's a tiny little kitchen, it works. Um, and we keep a compost bucket right here. Fast facts, some compost, because I'm a total compost nerd. I started composting when I was 22, which was a few years ago. And A, if you do it right, it doesn't stink. It has the aroma of the ingredients, of course it does, anything that you do, I do. So the compost, good compost, is healthy and it doesn't stink. We fill this bucket up probably till it's about half full and then we take it out and dump it on our compost. Are you composting it? I am, I have fruit flies, but oh, okay. I'd well, love to talk more about it. Yeah, the fruit flies, that's okay. They're a natural, they help, sure. they help things go. Um, and then if, you, if your pear is gone bad, go ahead and bless it and send it into the compost. Put your uh, cores in the compost, your, any parts of the pear you're not gonna eat, put that into the compost. I found out from our vet, our, our dog doctor, um, that pears are also safe for dogs. So 
I know our dog loves the core. So when I'm cleaning it out, I, I pop the seeds out and I give him the pear. So it's completely healthy for dogs too. Generally, if it's healthy for us, it's healthy for our dogs and cats. I'm not a vet though, don't quote me on that. I'm a connector and I'm an I'm a active cook. <laughs> All the same, if you have critters in your household, pears could be a good little snack. So if you're having something, go ahead. Like Mary Lynn, you got a great dog. Does Colvin like pears? He might, yeah. Maybe try. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Great dogs. You can confirm great. that my dogs like pears. So. All right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So it's fun to share. They want to know what you're having anyway. So you might as well share a pear. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday night, everybody. Mm -hmm. Having my first cocktail, totally alcohol free. This is pear juice with some coconut water, some fresh mint from our backyard. If you have mint in your backyard or your front yard or your side yard or in a pot, wherever, use it liberally. You can dry mint. I started drying mints, uh, we drew, but we drew, we dried. There we go. You're in the English department, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> aren't you? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, we have an editor on site. I love this. Um, uh, you can dry your herbs just like you can dry pears, but I wouldn't dry up your connections. Dried connections don't reconstitute very well. So decide if you wanna keep them and foster them or not, really, quite frankly. Um, unlike pears, connections take continued maintenance. Once these are gone, these are gone. Once they're in the belly, they've uh, met their ultimate destiny. Connecting with other people takes effort and energy, and you really wanna think about what is the nurturing that is needed? What is the if we use it in pair terms, what is the fertilization? What is the life cycle? What is the ecosystem? What is, maybe some of them need to go to the compost, quite frankly. It's a great opportunity right now to examine your connections, get clear on what you want your life to be quite profoundly. Uh, as a human connection expert, I teach people why and how to connect. And when we're kicking tires, when we're bouncing around, we don't know why we're doing what we're doing. So, so critical to a happy life, to feel connected with your why. And your why is your purpose. It's the, the purpose of this pair is to be a pair. And this pair is rocking it. The purpose for you is going to be something singular to you. It can change over your life. Whatever that is, I encourage you strongly to figure out, to get some help, find a coach, find a teacher. I believe my book is in the system, The Connectivity Canon. You can reserve that with the Jackson County Library System. And learn what the why is what's your purpose what's your big vision we've all kind of been adrift at different times right and that's because we're not solid on where we're going our why is our north star it's the full moon that we love to see because that helps guide us forward so there's a little lesson on connection mm. so good friday night stay hydrated my friends we're gonna keep going and questions in the chat of any sort are welcome. Comments, of course. Give us your best pair of jokes. If anybody has a pair of knock-knock joke, I'd love to hear it. So, Ginger, I did put in the chat that, um, fun fact I learned from our friends at Harry and David, is that while you're waiting for your pear to ripen, like, keep it in the fridge until you want to eat it, and then pull it out for a day to two or three, let it ripen, and then eat it. If you let it ripen and then are like, ooh, it's ripe, I better put it in the fridge to keep it, it continues to rot. Excellent point, Carrie. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Harry David, of course, they're the, they're the leader in, in the pears, in the valley and well beyond. Great point. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to slow the ripening, put it in a refrigerated scenario. That's why they're kept in cold storage, right? So once, once you are ready to have that, once you're ready to help that pear meet its destiny, take it out. Thank you, Carrie. Great add-on. So does that mean I can put my friends in cold storage until I need them? <laughs> that's gonna be up to you I really like that idea <laughs> look friend we need to put you in storage for a little while because I'm not quite sure I don't I'm not sure this is ripening the right way but I don't want you to rot so it's for your own good <laughs> yeah no rotting rotting friendships are really bad get rid of the rotten connections truly get rid of the toxic the negative the rotten that's funny there's, I don't know if there's a compost for that but, uh, you know, you're in charge so we're gonna make some waffles because it's just about dinner time. I hope this is making everybody hungry and I sure wish everybody could be here. Um, we'll say send your address, we'll come over. <laughs> all right, great. 
it's, it's on my website, gingerjohnson.com. Come knock on the door. I just opened up a huge can of worms. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. We're good. Um, we're going to make some waffles. And there are lots of different waffle recipes. So when we moved here 10 years ago, we moved to the Valley 10 years ago, 2010, one of the first things I went to get was a library card. Again, I'm a library nerd. Love it. Library lover. That's probably better than nerd. Although nerd, dork, whatever you want to call it. I love libraries. And we, we got a library card and we got a co-op card. Boom. Okay. Guilty. As charged. And I started visiting the food section. And we happened to live in Ashland at the time. And the food section in the Ashland library is pretty robust. I live in Talent right now. It's, it's solid there too. And I, I'd love to take a food section tour of all 15 branches. Maybe I'll do that. Um, and there's so many great books that you can use. One way I love to utilize the library is to check out the food books to see if I want to buy it. So the library provides the preview. I noticed on all the checkout cards, this is brilliant. I don't know who came up with it. It's on my, my receipts in the other room. It's got, you've saved $582. Like no lie. My, I am a compulsive checker outer. And that's why we want the libraries here to use, to utilize it. Get in there, be a patron, reserve, go patronize. You can still do it right now. You can do front door service. I've been doing that. Um, I want to say her name is Emily at the talent branch. Help me out. And uh, you save money while at the same time keeping the money that runs the libraries in our county. I mean, it's just a really interesting model when you think about libraries. They're absolutely a business. They are, it doesn't matter if they're for-profit or non-profit, they're still a business. So if you think about it that way and you connect with the fact that businesses need patrons to keep going and to keep viable and to keep growing. I talked to another one of my great library client partners just this afternoon in Casper, Wyoming, and they just got a grant from Google to do some more classes. You know, the reason that those entities give those grants is because the library is thriving. That's our responsibility as patrons to get out there and utilize the library, whatever the services are. I mean, Mary Lynn, my studio audience today, she's a professor at the local university. And are you kidding? Libraries, like how would you do research without libraries? Yeah, you can go on your laptop or your tablet. It's not the same. You're gonna find different, you're gonna find unique. And who loves the smell of a book, right? Woo, guilty as charged. Shackle me up because that's one I will take. There are so many powerful resources within our libraries and the libraries stay strong, stay viable, stay better and grow when we patronize them. Just like with our fabulous pairs, you got to take care of something just like your connections. you got to take care of these things for them to matter, for them to have some meaning. So while we make our waffles, yes, I am going to make waffles. I keep promising that I'm going to make waffles. I am going to make waffles. And while we are waiting for the waffle iron, it's heating up now. So we've made some progress. I, um, when I was shopping for the supplies, <laughs> Mary Lynn just gave me the eyebrow. Um, I have chocolate here in front of me. So there you go. Carrie Mae, I know you're on your way over. Um, when I was shopping last night, I realized I've never really thought about pears this much. <laughs> and as a very avid cook, go ahead, take one. Thank you. I love the opportunity to experiment. So I am going to include some recipes after this class. If you're watching it after the fact, you're going to get them in the information. I decided some chocolate would be in order. And it wasn't just some frivolous choice. Mmm. Mm. Just a minute. Chocolate's so good. Mm -hmm. We need to do a class on chocolate. I actually used to teach at the chocolate festival for several years. Anyway, chocolate and pears, I realized, as I was cruising the aisles, are an excellent partner. Here's why. Chocolate, mmm, that's lovely. Chocolate comes in so many different varieties, just like pears, that you're gonna find a really nice complement in your foods. That is one big lesson I wanna leave you with today. When you are pairing complementarily, I hope that's a word. Okay, it is now. <laughs> if it's not, it is now. When you are looking to pair things so they complement each other, you want to focus on intensity. Having given literally hundreds of beverage and food tastings myself, in addition to hundreds of dinner parties, yes, I'm that down the rabbit hole with this, uh, I've learned that intensity is a big key. The other member in my studio audience is my fine husband, who I adore, 
He's a professional brewer. I've learned to pair beer with the best of them. And so whatever you're pairing, whether it's coconut juice or pear juice or, or milk or kefir, it doesn't matter. Matching intensity is what really kicks it off. It's why, it's why we love peanut butter and jelly because the salty character of the peanuts and that, that umami value goes really nicely with the sweetness and just the, the, the fruit flavor of a jelly. And that bread, mm, that bread couldn't be happier, my friends. Like, talk about great destiny. That bread is so dang happy. So, um, and speaking of bread, I'm gonna make the waffles now. I'm not just gonna promise them. So, you have any questions or comments, stories about pears? Put them in there. I like to use a scale for measuring. And I started doing that because <laughs> When we moved to the valley 10 years ago, it was a higher elevation than where I came from. And we had a habit of making muffin Sundays. So we made muffins every Sunday. And the first month we were here, the first four weeks, my muffins didn't rise. And I was starting to get, frankly, quite frustrated. I'll say that, that's the family version. <laughs> and I thought, what on earth is going on? Why isn't this working? Well, I wasn't factoring in elevation. And so you can take a scoop and you can get a scoop, but it's not going to be the same as the weight. So I've started to use a scale, I've started to really pay attention to the detail, in, uh, especially when there's chemistry involved, like baking, like these waffles that I am in the process of finally making. Um, and I'm making the waffles because we're going to do some shaved chocolate and fresh pears on them. You can do it, right? Does that sound good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also a couple recipes in here as well as the canning books. I have a whole stack. I'm not sure how many you can see, but I've got, I must have checked out probably 15 or 20 books for research. This is great. I love this. One of the books the library also has is called Canning for New Generation. It happens to be one in my personal library too, so I was really thrilled that you had it. I've cooked a bunch from this fabulous book. It'll be in the list, uh, Cooking for a New Generation. I love this one, and one recipe I made from it was the amaretto pear sauce. Oh, baby, welcome to Friday night. This is great, welcome to Tuesday morning if you're watching it then, doesn't matter. The great simple pear sauce. So I'm gonna put some, in fact, Mary Lynn, if you would do me a favor, and I'll have you start chopping up these pears and putting them in this pan. There we go, we'll put a little pear juice in there to start. Go ahead and chop those up. Yep, Marilyn's wash your hands first, that's good. So waffles and pancakes, bread, pasta, rice, they are such tremendous vehicles for all kinds of good things. Pears love waffles, my friends. I'm here to tell you, they were talking to me this afternoon. They said, we want waffles. I said, what? Well, waffles! I said, okay, you got it. So. We love waffles in this household, and the pears love waffles. So pears, especially when they're really starting to get ripe, they are really soft and they will disintegrate really nicely for any kind of sauce you wanna make. So the opposite of that is if you don't want them to disintegrate as much, don't, don't wait till they're too ripe. You're gonna wanna use them earlier. So just like Carrie was saying earlier, if you, uh, if you wanna leave your pear, if you want to, slow down the ripening, put it in the fridge by all means. Uh, and if you want to accelerate it, take it out and let it ripen at room temperature because then it will, because pears ripen off the tree and in a warm environment. That's why when we see so many trees in the area or wherever you are, you see fruit trees and one day like, oh wow, it's all perfect. And then you come by two days later like, wow, the worms and the birds are having a feast. Yeah, you waited too long. So pick up your pears and your other fruit before they go to the birds, although the birds will be totally fine if you don't, because then more for them. All right, so waffles coming up. Um, uh, the waffle recipe I really like, I don't know if the library has this book or not, it actually came with my mixer, my KitchenAid stand mixer, um, and I've tried lots of different waffle recipes, and so I wanted to go with a tried and true, which is what I did, and um, it's all about experimentation. So like connecting, you get to try different things. And I connect totally with food. I can be here all morning, wander down some Saturday, okay. Sunday yeah, morning, okay? Totally. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, 
So tell me in the chat, for those of you who are here, tell me in the chat one thing you really like about pairs. Very little sing while you're typing in. Huh. What do you got? Um, twinkle, twinkle. Sing now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know she can. She's being modest. Put her on the spot. What's one thing you like about pairs? I mean, using my masher here. Don't they have some like literary connections? I mean, mm, like I don't know. I know. Didn't Eve was she eating a pear? Was she eating a fig? What was she eating? Ooh. So that's a good one. Eve in that good old classic garden. There is a debate of what that actually was. I guess they say it's an apple, huh? I, I guess. I think it was a pear. Okay, let's say it's a pear. <laughs> we'll say it's a pear yeah. for sake of argument. Yeah. Mm. All right, that's really tasty. I highly recommend the coconut water and pear juice, a little mint, and then of course your spear of happy pear in there bathing. It's just couldn't be a happier pear. I don't think it's possible. Pears are very happy, by the way. I wonder where the name came from. Something I didn't research. All right. So I'm not big on adding a lot of sugar to things. It's totally my personal preference. Um, the waffle recipe calls for a little bit. What sugar does in a recipe, there is some chemical. I'm not a scientist, but it can also help caramelize and make things a little browner. That's why like, butter is queen. I will pl put plenty of butter in. So I'm not a hypocrite because I don't use sugar and I use like, tons of butter. <laughs> I know what I like just like you. That's why it's also so great that we have so many varieties of pear. That's why connecting is so diverse and you get to be in charge of this, my friends. It's all on you. Mm. Need a couple eggs. How's our sauce coming along, Raylan? Um, great. Tell me what to do. I'm mashing it up. You're mashing it up and stirring it, make sure it doesn't burn. Great. Yep. And canning, for the record, is a great way to use plenty of fruit. Um, I love to can here in the valley. I've always, I've been canning my whole adult life. My first canning experience was pickles with my mom. And um, I love preserving because it's such a way to, for me, I really connect and, and it's, it's peaceful, it's therapeutic, it's interesting. Uh, it's a challenge. It's something I'm very familiar with, so it's very comforting to me. And when I spread the word to my friends that I'll take anything you don't want produce-wise, I get love packages dropped off. <laughs> and it's fantastic. I used to have a friend when I lived in Iowa, and she was a tomato farmer. I think she still does farm tomatoes. And she farmed these beautiful heirloom tomatoes, and she would come with that that great big like bread tray, that big plastic bread tray thing, she would come to our back door and she would leave all these tomatoes because the chefs picked out the ones that were perfect and we got the rest. We made so much dang tomato stuff that summer. <laughs> what a gift. There's so much opportunity with produce. And so one way to make it last literally is to preserve it. The library, Jackson County Library, has a ton of canning books. How's it looking? I think they're good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Make sure you put it on low and just let it simmer. It'll be perfect. Thank you. So tap into that also. Some of the other canning books, the ball canning book is the classic. And I, for the record, I highly recommend that when you use a canning book, make sure that it has been scientifically tested because canning is nothing to mess with. It's, it's, it is straightforward and I'm not trying to scare you, but I am here to tell you that the reality is that you wanna do it right so you do not get food poisoning, it's that simple. I took the Master Pre Preservers class, which Southern Oregon loves to master things, um, and it was great. It was through OSU, our extension office, another fabulous resource, and they taught us a whole bunch about it. And the library has a bunch of the great books. The Ball Blue Book is the classic go-to. I have it on my pile, but I'm gonna keep making these waffles. I'll show you shortly. So make sure that whatever you're canning, pears or cherries or whatever it is, follow scientific instruction because that does make a difference. Um, thankfully, when you're connecting with people, you don't have to be that scientific, although strategy is always a good idea. As a professional connector, I help people 
learn how to connect. You think it would be natural, and for a lot of people, it's comfortable, but we all can learn skills. We can all learn better skills, more skills um, from each other and so forth. Here's the butter. Thanks to Ruth Reichel. Ruth Reichel loves butter. If you read any of her books, which the library has some of her books, Comfort Me with Apples. What a great book by Ruth Reichel. Love that one. Um, and connections can be a little more flexible at the same time. Just like a terrific recipe, your connections take intention. If you want to connect with other people on purpose, with the idea of getting to know them, with the idea of making the relationship a relationship you want, whatever that looks like, whether you go 10 years in between seeing each other or you live just down the street like Mary Lynn, my fabulous neighbor here, uh, you're going to want to take a look at what is the recipe for connections. So that's why we're all hungry for connection. We all want to feel connected to somebody or many somebodies. And ooh, here they go. the waffles, the waffles are coming, the waffles are coming. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Who's got the trumpet? Call out the dogs. Well, no, the dogs don't get this. Dogs will not get this. Dogs can have pairs, but the dogs probably should steer away from the waffles. How's it looking, Marilyn? It's good. Okay, great. Run low and simmering. You yeah. just let it sit there and be happy. Okay. All right, I am determined to get a waffle or five out here while you are with me. So I've got the basic waffle recipe. We're gonna put on some spice pears, so I'm going to get some other spices to go with that. I love spices. This is a spice rack. I know you can't see it real well. I've got my empty soldiers sitting up there waiting. One thing with your spices is, turn around and finish this, is if you, oh, my house lid wasn't on very tight. If you want to keep them fresh, keep them in opaque containers. These are little ceramic containers. Um, it was a series of houses. Isn't that charming? Oh, yeah. A little Lennox set that my mom gave me years ago. Um, they will oxidize and they will also, um, they'll change colors. And while the changing of the color isn't bad, what that means is that the spice is degrading. And so if you want the spice at its best, just like a fresh connection, you've got to take good care of it. So I'm gonna put in, I'll put in a little clove and then my fine husband and I have gone wonky in the spice, not wonky. We have happily nerded up a little bit. Nerded up, I like that. Not nerding out, we're nerding up. We're nerding up here, folks. Um, nutmeg, nutmeg pods, so much fun. They're little tiny pods, they're about the size of probably your thumbnail. And you need a grater, use a, a micro plane, and grating fresh nutmeg. Mm, nothing like it, my friends. Do you use fresh nutmeg? I do, and chai. Ooh, yeah, 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 mm. chai. Pear, you know, you could, you could smash some pears, put some pears in a blender, and add that to chai. I bet that'd be fantastic. I bet that'd be too, yeah. Yeah, do you have any pears at home? No. Okay, we'll have you take a couple, so, with you, um, because, they are not gonna slow down their ripening, they're fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna put some spices in there and I'm gonna put my first waffle on. And here we go. Larry, did we get some chat activity on uh, what they love about pears? Yes. All right, so what is in the chat about loving pears? Eat hot or cold. Ooh, eat them hot or cold, that's right. Yum, 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 hot or cold. So who, who wrote that one in? Very many. Excellent. Yes. They are good and they're so happy to serve whatever that looks like. Anything else in the chat for what they love about pears? Most have lower acidity than apples. Oh, great point. Yeah. So if you're really sensitive to acid, the pears have it, but it is more mild. I'm not the scientist here. That would be an interesting um, part of the pear to research. Okay, waffles are going on. We Happy hot waffle maker. I have a question for the fine library crew who is in the room. Knowing that our library has innovatively embraced the internet of things and is lending a lot more um, goodies like ukuleles and lights, do you uh, lend out, can our library patrons get any cooking devices or any of those kinds of things? 
Yes. Right now we have Instapots and air fryers. And since I was recently gifted some waffle mix, I put in a request for a waffle iron too. <laughs> we don't have it yet, but I've put in that request. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So what a gift to connect with different parts of our lives. And I, I think I heard that when that first was rolled out, that uh, I think it was the ukuleles that sticks in my mind because there was yep. ukulele over there. Um, there was some blowback. And here's what I would encourage you to think of. No matter when you're watching this, think of your library as a resource overall. When computers came on the screen, on the scene, on the screen, <laughs> Freudian slip there. Um, when computers came on the scene, maybe people didn't want those in the libraries. When we started using electronic checkout, maybe we didn't want to use that. Change connects us in a different way. A lot of people don't like change. What they don't like actually is, is altering their routine. Routine is familiar. Routine is safe. It doesn't mean it's comfortable and it doesn't mean it's right or best or anything. What it means is it's something that's familiar to us. I've learned that as a human connector expert that what people often say is they, they don't expand their circle of, of people they know because they're unsure. They feel unsafe. They feel uncomfortable. Growth doesn't happen in a comfort zone. I think that's with the Bermuda Triangle somewhere. You've got to pay attention to where growth happens. Growth happens in the library. You pick up a new book and you step into a whole new world and think, whoa, oh, and you have that private experience, which makes it safer. I would encourage you to do that with your connections. Expand, grow, and do it one at a time. Connecting isn't a volume game, my friends. Just like I can only make one waffle at a time, make one connection at a time, make it intentional. Carrie, the director of the library, she, when I met her, it was great. It's like, I totally nerded out, which I'm sure she probably remembers. And I bet she gets that a lot because people who love something want to share it. Find a topic you love talking about and ask other people about it. So connect your tip. If you want to connect with people, figure out a topic, a general topic that you are interested in and come up with a couple of open-ended questions that you can ask somebody else. When you connect, it's not about you. Have you ever been in a conversation where it was all them, 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 them? And you, sat, you stood there and you thought, I don't even need to be here because there, this is a one-way street. This is not a judgment. We love to talk about ourselves. And connectors are cognizant of that. They're aware of that and they ask the open-ended questions. One of the number one tactics I teach people changes everything. When we ask an open-ended question on something we're interested in, that invites the other person to contribute. In fact, to the chat we go, what is a topic you love to talk about? Write it in the chat. I'm gonna ask my studio audience here next to, I'm gonna check my waffles. Do you think about what you love to talk about? Raylan, would you get a couple of plates from yeah, the yeah. All right, Larry. What, uh, we're going to start with Larry. He's off screen. He's a studio audience. He's helping on the uh, backside of the tech with this. Larry, what do you love to talk about? Beer. Oh, he loves to talk about beer. He's a professional brewer. Full disclosure. <laughs> Mary Lynn, what do you love to talk about? Teaching. Teaching. Great. Everybody's got teacher stories, teaching stories, student stories. These are terrific. Um, what, is the chat, what else does the chat say, Larry? Books. Books? Time what? <laughs> Come on. Fish in a barrel, people. Of course we love to talk about books. Yes, absolutely. Texas. So a couple Texas. of, and these are all, what's that? Texas. Texas. Yes. Don't mess with Texas. Texas is beautiful. Um, couple of great books. What a fantastic topic. And you could even expand that larger into reading because that's something that a lot of people, they read in all kinds of different ways, all the different kinds of platforms and modalities. So you could expand it. If you know, you, you could certainly start with books. I mean, you can start with whatever you want. It's your topic. You love it. That's great. Um, I find that what are you reading lately is a terrific opener. And you know, whether it's the back of the, the pear juice bottle or it's a book, or it's online, or whatever it is, people are definitely interested in sharing what they've read. A follow-up question that is phenomenal for connecting is, what do you like about it? 
So you could say, what are you reading right now, Mary Lynn? And Mary Lynn would say? Refuge by Terry Tempest Williams. Refuge by, slow that down. Terry Tempest Williams. Terry Tempest Williams. I don't know if our library has that or not. I don't know. And then both Carrie and I were like, oh, we love that book. Okay, so that's a yes. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> And then I could say, well, what do you like? What do you like about that book? What do you, what's the value? Why are you enjoying it? Oh, conversation is off and running. And that's what connection is. Mm, it's the taste of where it can go. Boy, this is so much fun. Okay, first waffle is ready. Wee! <laughs> oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I'm telling you people, having done hundreds of these on camera, it is not a guarantee that your food is going to come out looking like what you want it to look like. And this one does. Beautiful, hot, steamy waffle. Smells so good. Oh yeah, it's all yours, Marilyn. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this pear sauce. It's been simmering. Really simple. You can, pear is a wonderfully flexible fruit. So you can put it in sweet. You can put it in savory. You can, of course, the pear loves it when you just eat it by itself. Uh, spices, it's very accommodating. I mean, imagine this pear sauce mixed in with some jasmine rice. Super simple, maybe topped with a little cilantro. We're gonna amp this up and we're gonna shave some chocolate on top. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, we'll push the plate back. Make it a little bit better. Is that better? Okay, ooh, yes. And the chocolate I chose, there's so many great chocolates in this world. I chose a darker chocolate and while I am not a food racist, the darker chocolate, the darker the chocolate, the more the cacao, the more bitter towards bittersweet it is. And so if you have something that's really sweet, having given literally dozens upon dozens of chocolate presentations, you don't want the sweetest all the time. Oh, that's so pretty. It is. I know you can't see it probably with the whole book, but there's some pear sauce, fresh chafed chocolate. Let's get you a fork and knife. You get to start eating. Go for it. Studio remind audience. Me. Yes. Remind me what's in the pear sauce. Yes, the pear sauce is super basic. So it, we chopped up one of the um, abate fatel. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. This It looks like a bosque a little bit. And we mashed it with the masher, and then we put it on the stove. And to make sure that the fruit doesn't scorch, I put a little liquid in it. In this case, I used a little pear juice, so it just amped its peariness. Now, you could add all kinds of different spices. You could go on the savory side, you could go on the sweet side. I'm getting nods of approval mm. from, the, from the chocolate pear <laughs> waffle. Um, you could experiment, you know, you could put uh, rosemary in there. You could put sage in there. Those would be some really interesting flavor combinations. You could also do the classics, the warming spices, the, the clove, the ginger. I'm a personal <laughs> fan of ginger. Um, the cinnamon, you could do a little cayenne for a little zip. Um, you could do lemon. You could chop up some lemon rinds and put that in your, in your waffle batter, which I should put another batch of waffles on. So Larry's getting hungry. Yeah, I know, right? I'm waiting for you to come over. I mean, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready, Larry. We got plenty, we got plenty. So that's another great thing about pears is they are, again, to use my word, nimbility. They're really, really nimble. They simply want to serve. So, how is that? Is that right? It's exquisite. It's so good. Really? You're not yeah. just saying that. I'm not just saying okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like studio audiences who pander. No. And clearly she does not, so that's good. Abate Fatel. Abate Fatel. Repeat after me. Abate. 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 Fatel. Fatel. Thank you. Absolutely. Very good. What a great class we have here. So, so in the pear sauce too, I'll talk about that for just a moment. When I was looking through all these fantastic books and thinking about the canning I've done too, I mentioned the, uh, the amaretto pear sauce earlier. We've been having fun with it. It's been really good. I would amp up the amaretto. You could use, if you don't want alcohol in there, it, it probably mostly cooked off because alcohol has a lot of volatiles to it which means that they evaporate with a uh, heat application. They're not all gone, but uh, a lot of it goes away. You could use almond extract. You could use, I mean, you, could, you could have all kinds of fun with all kinds of different things, but I'm gonna definitely make this one again. I believe this was from the Canning for a New Generation, which the library has. Love this book. While we're on canning for just a couple minutes as we start wrapping up, um, one thing I was really curious about is for both connecting and for pears. I don't want things too sweet. And so 
I was able to find a book in the library catalog that's canning and preserving without sugar. I don't have anything against sugar. I just, we just don't need as much and we don't need as much processed sugar. That's Canadian for processed. So I found this book and I'm really excited about this because it's got all the recipes are low or no sugar. Honey is a phenomenal substitute for granulated sugar. Generally, rule of thumb, look it up in your own recipes, but generally rule of thumb is half the amount of honey to the total amount of granulated sugar. So if, I, if the recipe called for a cup of sugar, you'd go with half a cup of honey. Now the interesting thing with that is that honey has a more, has a different kind of sweetness because it is viscous, because it is suspended in water. Um, water content of honey is really low. Nonetheless, that's what makes it still liquidy. So read up on your honeys, use your honeys, and uh, I think that you're going to find that you can get really flexible. Sugar does play a role in preservation. There's no doubt about it. So that's why I didn't, I didn't want to just leave the sugar out. I wanted to do a little research. That's again, one of the beauty gifts of having a fabulous library system like we have so many great resources. And I know that a ton of the staff, the fabulous Jackson County library system staff, I know they love food and cooking and so forth. So you might just luck into somebody who's a total canning nerd like me. Couple other things, as we head to the top of the arm, I'm gonna check my waffle, make sure that's on track. Don't let burned waffles are bad. Um, a book, I, uh, a movie I checked out is Fear No Fruit. And this is all about Frida Kaplan. And if the name Frida is meaning anything to you, it's because she pioneered the exotic fruits. The, this was a really fun documentary. I think it was about 90 minutes long. She brought the kiwi, to America. And then she brought hundreds of other ones. It's dragon fruit and Buddha's hand and spiny lemons. And you watch this and it was so fantastic. So whatever fruit you love, like find out about it. It's so much fun to learn. That's the gift of the library. It's the gift of knowledge that we can apply in our lives. I'm so freaking grateful for the library. I'm grateful for pairs. I'm grateful for connecting. And I love hearing about people like Frida who pioneered this. It took her like three or four months. I don't remember exactly, but it took her three or four months to sell like 60 cases of kiwi because nobody, nobody knew what this brown fuzzy thing was. Fun fact, before she renamed it kiwi at the suggestion of one of her colleagues, it was called the Chinese gooseberry. So there you go. You're welcome. Um, really fun DVD to get from the library. Again, another great resource, uh, another great reason to patronize. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you one other great tidbit about the Jackson County Library System is when you have a patron card in good standing, you can get free movies on Hoopla, which is one of the extended services that the library offers. I've never heard of that before I moved here. Did you know this? No. Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A, it's a library's worth of movies and, and films TV and TV shows. Oh my gosh, we can't get enough. We don't hardly watch network television. We get the hoopla. So much fun. So much fun. So um, there you can get the movies. This is a preserving with friends, an easy step-by-step -step guide. So many things. There's so many ways to use pear. I've got a vinegar book. I've got fermented foods. There's so many ways to use, and there's so many great pears out there. We decided not to plant a pear tree in our yard because we know there are so many pears around the valley. We're gonna tap into what already is. Do whatever you want with your pears. Enjoy them fully, take good care of them, learn on them. Connecting with other people one at a time, just like one pear at a time, is so much fun when you learn how to do it. When you learn how to enjoy it, it's no longer a chore, it's a joy. Thank you so much for joining us on this Perry Entertaining episode. My name is Ginger. I'm a human connection expert. I've done a few cooking and food demos too. And we're so glad you're here. We're going to wind it up. If you, if you have any questions for me, by the way, you can go to gingerjohnson.com. Happy to help out with whatever your pair questions are. I'll direct you probably somewhere else, but we can start there. And uh, Carrie is going to take us home with some announcements and so forth from the library. So Carrie, it's all yours. Yes. Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much, Ginger. This has been amazing. And I feel like I've learned 
way more than I ever intended to learn about pears, and I love it. <laughs> uh, so I want to remind everybody that summer reading program starts tomorrow, Saturday, uh, June 6th, and it lasts until August 15th. So you can go to our website, and if you go to back, uh, jcls.org backslash SRP, it has information about our summer reading program, how you can register with Bean Staff. We're doing digital, um, uh, I guess, tracking of what you're reading this year. It's a really cool feature. Um, you can sign up for your Bean Stack account and start getting um, opportunities to win prizes just by reading, which we know you were already going to be doing anyway, so you might as well get prizes for it too. Um, the reading program is open to all ages, correct? All ages. It is for children, um, the youngest of the young, and it goes all the way through, you know, the the youngest of the 99-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatically put. All right. Yes. And um, we have a bunch of great programs happening this year all online. So you will have opportunities to connect even online through the library. And we hope to see you all at as many of the programs as you can um, attend. There's, uh, I can't even think of what all we're doing right now, but there's a history of the teapot. We're going to have crossword puzzles, how they're made and how to make them. Um, and that's just two that are coming to my mind yeah. right now. <laughs> too, right? Story hour? Yes. Yeah, so for children, there are, um, you know, there's going to be take and make programs. You can come and pick up, you know, you register for the, the take and make, and then you go to your library, pick up the, the packet, and you get to make it at home. Uh, so I encourage everyone to look at our public events calendar so you can see all of the great stuff that's going on. And then check out our catalog because we are often um, updating lists created by our, your friendly librarians and um, just great things for you to read. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Support your local library. Support your local pear grower. Keep connecting. Take care and keep reading. Cheers.